it's a very old idea. It's always about getting the technology out of the process. When you work on a film where there is an hour and a half or even two hours of music, and this process between the DAW and the notation program is there for two hours of music, every little task is going to be performed thousands of times. And you start to put a time a factor on a certain process. And I'm going to do that 4,000 times in the next three months. And then I'm going to do that 3,000 times. And so the smallest elements are big when you have that macro view of them. So absolutely, you know, the, the only reason for me to go one place rather than another is time. It's got to do with a kind of intuitiveness. I, I can't call either one of those products software. It's just, it's so much more than that. But there's, it's like you, you, you start to learn how the makers of it think. And you know that when there's a function you want to do and it's that intuitive and that easy to access and do, you know that the people who made that know what you're trying to do. And when you have literally thousands of functional elements in a tool you're using every day and you're feeling like that, it's, it's got this kind of interesting familial thing. When I try to do something in Dorico and I can't find out how to do it, the first thing I do is I doubt myself. It's like, wait, wait a second. The people who made this obviously thought about how to do that. So uh, I just don't know where it is yet. I've just found a kind of resonance with Cubase and, and Dorico that just feel they feel so comfortable and forward thinking and, and kind of made for what I'm trying to do. I love popovers. I love how easy it is to change note durations. I love how easy it is to turn quarter notes into eighth notes without like um, some plugin or, you know, I love the way you can insert things and the way it moves everything. I love the way you can change time signatures and everything either moves accordingly or doesn't. You know, the creating of the original piece, as it were, is only the beginning. The value ultimately is in the editorial um, power of Dorico. And I'm just finding that to be such a joy because I get changes in the state. Oh, you know, there it is. There it is. Simple example. I am always having to take sometimes so many markers and a timeline from Cubase and then get them into my sketch. Now you just go to the menu and you import your markers as text events. Miraculous for me. Um, you know, that would have been so much labor on and on and on to do that. Now in Dorico, it's like, it's a function. I, I open up my five line template, I bring it in, I, I just go and it's import tempo map or, you know, whatever that actual function is. And it's like, boom, and it's just done. I'm not a keyboard player. Um, so if I've got a part like da ga da da ga da 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 ga da in Dorico, I can go two, three, four. There it is. Now I hit return L and I go dum bum boom boom on the keyboard as slow as I need to go and I'm done. To try to do that, you know, with commands for, okay, that's a triplet, eighth note triplet, um, quarter note, eighth note, four sixteenths, you know, so much quicker to do it like that. 
it's kind of miraculous. First of all, to have the opportunity to do that. Um, and the collective quantity of brilliance in a room like this, where there might be 91 human beings who have spent their lives learning an art form and have learned it to a very high level. Um, and to be in a room with those people and to have this clock on the wall that it goes, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And it's, it's so, it's so amazing that, you know, behind all of this is this horrible pressure, um, you know, to get it done, get it done beautifully, but get it done quickly. Grave consequences for a problem. Um, and yet, when they talk about music, they say one plays music. And that's ultimately what has to happen. Everyone has to be so proficient that they actually in the midst of all of this pressure and all of these consequences, they can actually play. And they do. And it's, it's, uh, it's breathtaking, it's magical, and you really can't think about it too much. Or you, you, you couldn't stand up, you'd just faint. I, I can say great things about Cubase and Dorico all night. I hope you will conf convey my thanks to to the team because I know you've got, you know, you've got all of these people there who make that happen. And uh, just like the orchestra is here making that happen, uh, it's a big deal and uh, very much appreciated. <laughs>